These are important Ableton Live settings you need to change right now. It will make your life in Ableton Live so much better, I promise. Hi, my name's Craig, welcome to the channel. Let's jump right into it. To open up your settings in Live, we're gonna use the shortcut, command, comma, or control, comma on Windows. First, we're gonna go to display and input and check out Zoom. This will just zoom into Ableton Live and make it really big and easy to see. Or if you're on a smaller screen and you can't see anything, you can zoom out. It's just a really good one to have. Next depends if you're using a trackpad or a mouse. If you're using a mouse, you're gonna to wanna to turn on show scroll bars. Now, if you can see here in Live, it's shown all the scroll bars that are available and I can click and just drag on them. Sometimes they are hidden away making it hard to scroll through Ableton Live if you don't have a trackpad. Turning this setting on solves one of the most annoying problems in Ableton Live. It's this setting here that says draw MIDI notes with pitch lock. Now, if I show you what it is without, if I load a drum kit, double click and say I want to create a bunch of hi-hats and I press B to turn on my pencil tool and start, oh, it's a, it's a mess, right? So now if we go back to our settings and I turn on draw MIDI notes with pitch lock. Turn that on. Let's try that again. I'm going to press B to turn the pencil tool on again and drag across the page. Oh my days. Wow. What it does is it locks the pencil tool to that chosen lane in the piano roll. So that could be a note or if you're using the drum rack like me here, that could be a sound. So you don't have to worry about staying completely within that lane. You can just drag across the page and it locks it to it. Turn that one on. That one's a good one. Next is the most important setting and that's how Ableton Live looks. If you notice my Ableton Live is quite dark, I can go in here and I can change all the different colors of Ableton Live. If I go back to default, I can then choose if it's light or dark and tone if it's cool, which has a bit more blue, warm, which is a bit more yellow. Just keep it to neutral there. Also, we have brightness. We can dial down the brightness of Live, making it a bit more contrasty. I like mine up to 200. Also, we can choose the default color of a track. I quite like this turquoise color. I'm gonna select that. Then I'm gonna reduce the automatic colors. This reduces the color palette when assigning colors to tracks and clips. Next, we're gonna go down to file and folder. Now this is a personal preference, uh, turning on or off create analysis files. Now some people out there will tell you to absolutely turn this off. I, however, like it on still. <laughs> if you turn this off, Ableton Live will not create an additional analysis file and it might take a little bit longer each time you load up your projects. If you have a project with a lot of samples in, Ableton Live has to scan through all of them to apply all the warping and sample processing stuff it does. However, if you do have a session with a lot of samples and it's taking a long time to load up, it is beneficial to turn this on. So that one's up to you really. Another thing down here is to do with the cache files that are stored in Ableton Live. If you're finding you are running out of space, you can change your limit here. You can make it smaller and that will free up some space on your hard drive. Next is library and we're gonna go to collect files on export and we're gonna change this to ask. As default, it's set to always. And what this deals with is collecting files into the user library. For example, if I had simpler here and I dragged an audio file in here, then I create this as a preset. Now I've selected ask, it's gonna ask me, do I want to copy files from elsewhere, files from other projects, files from user library, and files from factory packs back into the user library. So essentially duplicating the file because it's already there. This is only good if you're really thinking about sending this preset to someone else. Otherwise you're just gonna be duplicating these files. So if we turn all these off and go copy, it's going to copy the preset, the simpler. And if I drag it into here, it's still going to be able to use all the audio files. So that in the long term will save you so much space on your hard drive. Next is show cloud and show push. You only need these turned on if you're using the Ableton Note app or the Ableton Push 3. If you're not using those two devices, you can turn these off and it'll free up some space in your browser window here. Another little bonus trick, if you're running out of space on your hard drive and you'd like to store loads of samples and presets in your user library, you can change the location here by selecting browse and selecting it to an external hard drive. That way you can store a lot more samples and presets on a, an external hard drive. Only downside is you have to have the external hard drive plugged in. Now plugins tab, this is where you can tell Ableton Live where to find all your external VSTs. If you're using a Mac, you can go up here and tell if you want to use audio units, VST2s and VST3s. 
if you've installed VSTs and programs and it saved it automatically on your computer, it's going to go to your system folders. If you saved it somewhere else, that's where you need to use custom folders. Next thing is plugin windows here. Multiple plugin windows I like to have on. So it basically means I can have more than pl one plugin window turned on. Next one is auto hide plugin windows. Now as default, this is turned on. If I turn this on, let me show you. If I go to my plugins, just gonna choose FabFit or Q3, the best EQ around. And I'm gonna click on this little mechanical dial here to open it up. If I click on another track, it automatically hides it. Now, if I go back, automatically opens it back up. Some people like that workflow. I don't like it. If I've opened up a plugin window, I want it to stay there and I'll close it. If I wanna close it, it's just the way I work, okay? If I go back to settings and I turn that off, now, if I click on any track, that's going to stay open all the time. Next one is auto open plugin windows. What Ableton Live will do is it will open up the plugin as soon as you apply it to the track. Now, sometimes I like this on, depends what mood I'm in, because if you load the plugin, you usually want it open, right? Let me demonstrate that for you. So if I go into Pro MB like that, it automatically opens it up for us so we don't have to click on this little mechanical dial here. So that's a good one to have on. Now record, warp and launch. There's a lot of settings here we are going to change from the default. I promise will make your life easier. So first one is a preference. I like to just record into a WAV file, count into two bars and turn off exclusive arm and solo. That means you can um, multiple tracks and you can solo multiple tracks in Ableton Live. Record session automation in and select this to all tracks. That means when you've got session record enabled and you want to record automation into tracks, they do not have to be record enabled. Start transport with record and turn this off. What that basically means is as soon as I press the record button here, it's not going to start recording straight away. I will have to press play, then it will start recording. That one I just find really handy because when I press record, I might not be ready yet. So I can press record, arm it essentially. And when I'm ready, press play and go. Next, make sure loop warp samples are set to auto. Auto warp long samples, we want to turn that to off. That's when you import long, say song length samples, say three minutes, it's not going to warp them. There's two instances you would do this really for sampling and DJing, also for importing mix session stems. Now I do a lot of mixing in Ableton Live. So when I import the stems, I want that off because otherwise the stems are going to be warped all out of time. Usually stems are exported in time with each other, import them in, they should all line up. If that's turned on, they won't. So it's important you have that on. Default warp mode should be set to complex. It's a bit CPU heavy, but it's the cleanest one. Create fades on clip edges. You want to turn this off. That will create a four millisecond fade on the start of every clip you import. If you're using Ableton Live's loops and one shots, there won't be any clips or pops at the start. If you're using any splice or any other sample provider online, there's not gonna be any clips. There's no need for that and it can affect the transients of your loops. If however, there is a clip on one of your samples, if you go into live, if you drag a sample into live like this and you hear a clip, you can double click and you can press the fade button here and that will apply the fade to the individual clip. And last but not least in this section is default launch mode. Change this to toggle. By default, it's set to trigger. That affects what happens after you've pressed play on the clip. If I press play on a clip here, I press it again, it re-triggers it. Now in my head, I press the clip. When I want to press it again, I want to turn it off. So that's what toggle does. So you can set it here to the individual clips or have a default. Now I've set that to toggle. If I press play on it now, it will launch it, press play on it again, it will turn it off. Now, if you change that globally, it will only do it to new clips that you import into Ableton Live Session View. It will not change all the clips that are in there already. You can just simply press Command A or Control A on Windows, select all and then change all the clips there. Now you've got your settings set. Let's jump in this video here and learn how to use Ableton Live.